Hi there, and welcome to Eight Weeks Out TV. This is the very first episode of a brand new format, and with me is a good friend and colleague Howie Clark. And Howie is an athlete that I uh, worked with for a couple years off and on. He played professional baseball. I'll let Howie tell you a little bit more about his background. Yeah, well, uh, I played uh, professional baseball for 18 years. Uh, spent parts of six seasons in the major leagues with uh, Baltimore, Toronto, and Minnesota. And uh, met Joel, like you said, a couple of years ago and uh, have a good uh, relationship so far. That's right. So the idea behind the show is really to, to bring the top experts, to bring different uh, people from training, nutrition world, scientists, and really just all areas of fitness together to discuss what's going on in the world of training, to give you different training tools, training methods, exercises, theory, to, to really just make something that you will want to watch and something that you will get a lot out of. And so Howie and I, in the next uh, several weeks, months, you know, hopefully years, we're bringing in a lot of different top experts to, to do exactly that. And uh, you know, maybe Howie can tell you about this first expert we have on. He's somebody that uh, I've known for a couple years and I think you'll like the challenge we threw down before him. Yeah, uh, we got uh, James Fitzgerald, who was the uh, first CrossFit Games winner in 2007. Uh, has a wealth of knowledge, and uh, he's, uh, we're going to put him through the, uh, the course, and maybe you could talk a little bit more about the course that uh, is definitely going to be challenging for him. Yeah, so the course is really a conditioning test that I put together, uh, I want to say, five or six years ago for different MMA athletes, and literally we've had everybody from Rich Franklin to Maybe on Fernandez and Sakurai, Chris Lehman, Tim Boat, DJ, Demetrius Johnson, the current uh, flyweight champion of the world, and really it's just it's a brutal conditioning test, and it gives me an idea of what kind of shape they're in, and helps me make sure that those guys are ready to to fight. And so we use it as a benchmark. Um, there's you know we have literally about 200 different athletes I've had run through the course. So Howie actually is number two. Don't want to pump his eagle up too much, but <laughs> he's, he's done very well in the course. And James, being the former CrossFit champion, the first CrossFit champion, heard about the course uh, and we talked a little bit about it. And he wanted to come see what he was made of and see what he could do. So I'm personally curious to see if he can top Howie's second place or if the course is going to beat him. What do you think is going to happen, Howie? He is uh, he's super fit, man. If, if anyone can uh, put a show, the first time you do the course, it's just brutal, like you said. So. Um, you know, I may have an unfair advantage after the first time I did it to doing it a few more times. I, I can't, the fact that I trained you for it. That's what I was getting to is you, you trained me for it and, and, and <laughs> it's an unfair advantage, but um, no, I, I learned how to do it properly and uh, definitely saw my level of fitness go up, but I'm excited to see James attack it. And uh, he's, uh, man, he's, he's awesome. Yeah. So you're going to see what the course is. It's six pieces of cardio equipment and each piece you have to get done as fast as possible with a one minute break. And really it's just a measure of how much power you can maintain for a 20 to 25 minute span, which is of course, you know, very important for a fight, which can be anywhere from 15 to you know, 25 minutes. And so it's a brutal test. It uses literally every muscle in your body and you can't fake it. You're either in shape and you do well or you're not and you're going to get crushed. And we've had several people, you know, give up and not finish it. So, yeah, it's, it'll be interesting, you know, it's uh, with the CrossFit and we, I think your, your feelings on CrossFit have been documented, but uh, the people that have claimed that their level of fitness is the greatest, um, who happen to be CrossFit people, we've seen them want to quit on the course and, yeah. uh, but um, no, this will be an interesting test. I'm excited to see him and, and uh, you know, he, he's in for a surprise, I think. I think so as well. So. With that said, let's get James Fitzgerald, the first uh, CrossFit Games champion from 2007, and we're going to show you how he does going through the course. Hey, I'm here with special guest James Fitzgerald, and if you're not familiar with James, James was the first CrossFit Games champion in 2007. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. I'm good. Ready to go. Sweet. Now, we flew James in to take on this conditioning course. It's a course that we've used to test the conditioning of, of a lot of different world champion fighters and uh, really just kind of gives me an idea of what kind of shape they're in, make sure they're ready to fight. So I know you've been doing a little bit of training to get ready for it. Yeah, well, I love the fact that you have tests to kind of determine what that is. We have our own tests too, so I'm, I want to man up and see if I'm capable of uh, doing what you have to offer for your fighters. Yeah, well, I'm, honestly, I'm curious to see it too. I know all the viewers are as well. And, you know, we're going to see how a former CrossFit Games champion stacks up to the best fighters in the world. All right, so we're going to get started with the first piece, and that's the Concept 2 rower. Uh, the distance James would have to go is a thousand meters and a good time is generally in the low three minutes. So let's see what James can do. And whenever you're ready. And 
and time. 321. Good start for James. So now we get to 60 second break and we'll pick him up on the next piece. All right, we're here with the second piece. This is the Woodway Force. He's got to go 500 yards. Got about 170 to go. Stop, 317. Now it's three minutes and 17 seconds. We're on to the rope. All right, next piece is the endless rope. He's got to go 1,320 feet. Four minutes and 58 seconds. And we're here with piece number four and that's the Jacob's Ladder. This is one where we really see what he's made of because his legs will be on fire by the time he's done with this one. Last hundred feet. Time, five minutes even. All right, piece number five is the bike and he's gotta go two miles with a resistance of 10. Time, 327. The last piece here is the Versa Climber. Two forty six.
All right, so total time we added up is 22 minutes and 49 seconds, uh, which puts James 11th. How would you feel about your performance in the course overall? That was pretty good. A couple of pieces I could learn from for sure, but uh, uh, not doing it is a good test. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, coming in the first time, I was disappointed, but you know, that's the way I'm supposed to feel. I'm sure you'll be back for more, <laughs> right? Beat it, so <laughs> that was good. It was a good test. Yeah, so I mean, we're, we'll definitely have James back and, and give him another shot, but you know, thanks. Really appreciate you yeah, coming out here no and, and uh, you know, here. give it a shot and yeah, we'll, we'll see you again soon. Okay. And welcome back with the studio. We have Howie as always and our guest of course is James Fitzgerald who just ran himself through the conditioning gauntlet. How are you feeling after that? I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good? Yeah. How, it's not bad. That was a tough one, man. Yeah, yeah that was, that was a good. Grind. That was yeah. good. It's a couple hours. Yeah, what did you think of the uh, the rope and the uh, ladder? Definitely took her toll on you. Yeah, um, I had I thought that coming in, you know, I had enough breathing and, and ability to be able to, to go through them. And as I told you, um, or I think um, an important piece of it is just seeing how fast you can adapt to it. And uh, the adaptation to the endless rope just didn't happen um, as quick enough. So you know, you, you just fight through it, and and then from the rope. Uh, leading into the ladder, it just became, you know, just hang on until it was over. So, for your first time, it's it's a really yeah, good time. Thanks, it's thanks, no, no, seriously, no, yeah, it is. Seeing you beat it, then of course you can say that. But uh, how he, no, how it was he okay. does have what, yeah, the second, yeah. second time, still second, best. second yeah. number yeah. two. Yeah, well, yeah, but it wasn't. Be, you should be impressed. It, it wasn't under impressive. the bright lights, and there was no pressure. You know what I mean? So oh, that's that's nice. Thanks. I wasn't saying that. <laughs> You perform under pressure, man. It's, yeah, yeah. It's not no, like that. it was good. Um, so what do you, yeah, I learned lots from it. Tell us a little bit about what are, you, what are you doing for training these days, personally? What do you, what well, do you do? I've been training to, to uh, prepare for this, pretty much. I think that uh, uh, my, ba my balance in training from CrossFit background and, uh, and just in fitness in general, um, I always have the, that uh, idea that I can pretty much prepare for anything in, you know, just slightly off the mold, you know. Um, probably never win at any of them, but, uh, but be well prepared for it. And I think that... Um, we have some of the principles involved within, you know, mixtures of training and balancing fitness that allows people to, to do uh, anything they want um, if it's all put together correctly, which is why, you know, we resonate in terms of things we talk about. Um, so for my training, um, I'll participate again, you know, within CrossFit. I train a lot of CrossFit athlete, athletes right now, and uh, it's, it's infectious. It's kind of being in a gym um, with a bunch of real good fighters or good baseball players, and uh, you, still have, you still have a little ability and so I still have the ability uh, to still do it. So um, I'll, be, I'll be training for, uh, for CrossFit and various different events and my own event to the Uptathlon, our own test of fitness. And so it just keeps me balanced. Yeah. You know, and one thing I think was really interesting about uh, you know, your background is obviously you won the first CrossFit Games and you train a ton of athletes for, for the CrossFit Games, but you, you know, you've been a bit outspoken in terms of the, the shortcomings of just doing the CrossFit work of that day and the actual training methodology of CrossFit. And you obviously yeah. don't subscribe to the kind of run everybody through the same yeah. program. And your programs are very individualized. So can you talk a little bit to, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's lengthy. And so keep me on track based upon that. But uh, sure. um, so I got into it because I fell in love with it. I thought it was unique. And uh, I thought there was something special inside of the design of it. And um, I think because we went from you know bodybuilding and cardiovascular work or just strength conditioning principles and I was always curious so I wanted more so we started doing these workouts and it just basically opens your eyes you know to um, a piece of fitness that whether it's more fit or not um, it certainly makes you rethink prescription of fitness and that's to me as a coach too I was fascinated by it so the you know based upon how it how it started I was I was good I was good enough you know I was good enough where I could adapt. I had a I had a good engine, mechanically not the best, but I could I could do a lot of the workouts to be okay. And then based upon the numbers in the year and all of us coming together, I won the first one and still did subsequently pretty well for the next couple of years. But um, I just believe that over time, you know, I've developed uh, everything that I learned prior to CrossFit. Because people forget that I, I was a strength conditioning coach, successful strength conditioning coach. I would consider uh, for 10 years prior to even starting CrossFit. Um, so I had thought I knew everything within strength conditioning by practicing it, you know, with the elite athletes to mom and dads to kids and, and putting my time in. And now CrossFit just kind of shakes up the picture. And uh, um, I basically then changed my prescription because I saw some pieces within that magic that could make a prescription for fitness a whole lot better. So I just believe that um, it can be done better than what most people see as the prescription for CrossFit. Now, the interesting thing is that 
Um, with, when people do CrossFit, you got to remember what their starting point is and what their, their, their you know, ability is at the point because there's some people that can do it that the, the dose response of the variation in the systems and the variation in the training is actually CP work, it's actually strength training, and it's aerobic work. So it can be very beneficial for a crap load of people because um, it, it's, it's written as high intensity protocols, but the dose response of the people doing it makes it uh, very like muscle endurance based and aerobic. Mm -hmm. So it's actually not in the middle pathway of what everyone thinks it is. Now, the problem is that when people become more and more developed and their ability levels rise, they start being able to go into that middle piece a lot harder. Does that make sense? Sure. So they can devise power and then go at high intensity principles consistently. And generally the ones that are most resilient ended up doing it as a sport because at that point in time they saw, okay, now I need to do some intervals, now I need to switch things up. And, uh, and so that's where we come in because we believe that after 12 to 18 months of all that high intensity stuff, the, 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 I don't know what the saying is, but the cat's up. Like you gotta, there's something, something you, you gotta do something different in yeah. order to make progressions based sure. upon that. Um, so it's, it's very interesting because I'm not gonna say that it's not good for, for anyone or everyone because there, there is a whole lot of people that it can be beneficial for, but done too often and the wrong way, quote unquote, um, which is still complicated. And what is the right way? Um, I think that it, it can be uh, detrimental. Um, so what do you think as far as the, I guess one of the criticisms and something I would say is just the fact that there's no real progression, like you're saying, from someone who comes in out of the street to the highest level. I mean, if you're gonna treat it as a CrossFit gym, they're yeah. gonna do the same things. Whereas, you know, like you're saying, the guy's at the top level, they've been prepared, they've trained. Yeah. You can't necessarily throw somebody off the street into the same level or same everything that you're yeah. throwing the top guys. I mean, that's to me, I think the missing component. Is yeah, there's the progression. oh, there's so much to that. Um, so much to that because I'm also empathetic too because I also help business owners who truly want to help people. Right? They truly do. And so the prescription that they believe is going to get those people to that is based upon a principle of uh, a sport. And so you see that you know this, the, the breaking point has to happen. When people come in, you have to say, you're doing this for fitness or you're doing it for sport. And if you do this for fitness, here's the prescription. Right. And it's gonna look nothing like the way that you're gonna do it for sport. Whereas if you decide to sign up for a sport, then you have to pay the price of admission, which means that mechanically, physically, all those things need to be in place for you to participate in that. So you can see that if it's, if it's uh, bled and marketed to be flashy and to be sport driven that everyone can do it well i mean that will pull people in and then if you're signing up on the door saying that this is what you should do then you're going to get that expectation from those folks that that's what they should be doing so you can see where the problem lies is the coach and the owner is like well you know i don't know how to do it and that's what our job is though i mean that's what i want to do is teach those people it can be done and it can be fun you know fitness can be fun if it's mixed with a bunch of things and done correctly but it has to be through fitness um, and not sport. And if you're gonna choose one, like sign up and, and make right. the decision. Well, one thing I think that you're doing differently and better, I would say that you know, the other CrossFit gyms aren't doing is, is progressively learning and trying to refine your training and, and get the answer to these questions. Whereas I think a lot of the reasons um, that I've criticized CrossFit, other people you know, probably have is they seem very stuck on this. Their way they have now is the right way, the only way, and anyone who questions that or doesn't agree with it is wrong and just they wanna get rid of them. I, mean, yeah. I would say maybe yourself included in that. And to me, that's a, you know, such a detrimental thing to the group as a whole. I mean, why would you not want to use the group to build knowledge and to answer questions and to get better? Why would you want to segment everybody else and say you're wrong and this is yeah. the only right way? I mean, to me, that's one of my biggest personal complaints against CrossFit as a whole is just, it's such an exclusive or exclusatory, I should say, mentality of just get rid of everybody else that doesn't agree with us. Yeah, now, you know, there are people within there um, that are still, you know, friends of mine and also coaches that I coach within it that really are trying to make a difference for it. So the name on the door says that, but it's a, it's a, it's a piece to allow them to express what they want to do within the system. There are some like guidelines in terms of what you can and cannot do. And just to clarify, I'm not a CrossFit gym. Um, uh, we are a private training facility. We just coach a lot of CrossFitters. Um, but the, the, I think the piece that you said in terms of uh, exclusivity, um, I totally agree with. I put my heart and soul into coaching uh, CrossFit athletes and improving people who coach people within CrossFit. Um, and the return on that is seeing all those people do it a different way and get some results. And I think those people who do that will have long-term success. 
and the ones that don't allow an open-minded peace, because you still can. So it's actually not just the system saying you can't, you can't do that, right. it's the people within that can make the change. They can say, you know what, I can do things slightly differently, it doesn't have to be like that. And the thing is, is that time will tell. I mean, as I said, there's a 12 and 18 month mark, which we see it everywhere. I mean, I mean you won't hear about it, of course, but I see it. I see all of it. And you know, even visiting your site and you can you can see all of the different tools that you bring to the table. It's it's, it's extremely individualized what you do with yeah. each client is different, you know. Yeah. A different, a different prescription which makes it a lot of work for you, yeah. but in the end it, it makes it so much better for the person who's going through the training. Yeah, and then, you know, then there's things that arise of course with individual training when you sell a group conditioning model. Um, and we've had, you know, uh, a lot of trials and errors on basically how to how to make that work and I still do believe that um, I'll go blue in my face to say that individual conditioning is the magic formula for improving people long term. So everyone who says, well, there's a community involvement and high fives and all, well, you know, um, I, I understand that, but let's go right down to the nitty gritty of long term development and self responsibility for fitness. I believe that individual model is going to be best suited. So we try to teach people still who do, in, who do group conditioning to be the best individual coach. And sure. I think if you're the best individual coach, the best you can be, you can grow up coach a group of people in, in fitness and still make it upgraded and you know, slightly better as opposed to taking that one fits all approach right. and then not knowing the dose response of right. however, what everyone gets out of the training session. So that's, that's a tough time that we have. Um, so I can't coach everyone individually. I try my best and I still love doing that. So we try to coach coaches to become the best individual coaches using universal principles of training. And I know you've been using uh, you know, the BioForce Pro Trainer we've been yeah. playing around with. and. I definitely think tools like that, you know, make it easier not to sell my own stuff, but you know, certainly having the ability to look sell at it. sell it, you sell know, it, look at the individuals yeah, within a group. <laughs> there we go. Go ahead, go buy. It. Uh, a couple. Yeah. I think you know having the ability to monitor and, and look at that stuff on a large scale makes it easier, you know, for yourself and other coaches yeah. with large groups. Can you tell us a little about? You know? Yeah. So we we probably have um, like fifty plus uh, individuals we look at a daily daily basis that are doing um, either as a doing it mainly as a sport, let's say high percentage of them as a sport. Um, and it's been about uh, uh, maybe four months, I guess, total where we've got the data for the four months based on So it's going to take more time to basically see some more on it. But the effectiveness of it is, is the powerful thing because it, it creates a responsibility in the client to see what else is happening That's exactly that allows huge. them to stay accountable to the training program. So um, you're not guessing anymore. So. You know, we could we could argue. You know, I'm sure there's people out there arguing. Ah, you know, some days I had this score and I PR and you know. But when you look at the trends over time, you can't negate the fact that when people listen to it, you're able to train lo like without right words longer and more and more effective. Yeah. And so if everyone had that piece of a readiness piece, um, which HRB measures just you know really well. Um, I think that it could change, you know, the whole paradigm in terms of like people coming in because the group, the group training model, not just in CrossFit, but anywhere, you know, all those people come in to get energy from their workout, which is the complete wrong, <laughs> wrong system. You know, if you're coming in to get your ass handed to you so you can work off your adrenaline for the day, that's a broken system. Yep. So if you have HRV as a starting point, so people wake up for, you know, 20 days in a row after they start their baseline and they're amber or red, like that's an indicator. Like you got to fix some stuff, better eating or, in, or fix your training or whatever the case may be. Um, Cause I think that, you know, and so it's a good and bad thing. Cause if it was, if people started doing it, I think that They'd see what was actually going yeah, on. Yeah, it's like what I say when I teach coaches how to teach people how to assess. Um, you know, there's a little like, well, I'm not sure if I want to show that my program doesn't work. <laughs> you know, that's because they start assessing and they're like, well, you know what, we're not improving. So that's a little, so you can see where the, the pain may come from that. But reality sucks sometimes. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't, honestly, I think you, you, honestly. you want the truth, you want to be a better coach, or you want yeah, to exactly. fake it. Yeah, that's it. But I mean, that's what, you know, that's what I'm here for. That's my passion. I wake up every day to try to help coaches and athletes realize that because I don't like bullshit uh, training and people that call themselves prof professionals and coaches and don't follow through with that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I want you to tell everybody, uh, we wrap things up here, where can they find more about your training systems. I know you and you know, I were just talking about a lot of online coaching stuff you've been working on. So where can they find more about that? Uh, you can visit optexperience.com. OPT, uh, then experience, the word comes right after, dot com. Well, I think we'll definitely have to have you back next year. Howie still holds the uh, 
Number two spot, I think, going I think you're in number 11. Yeah, so. I'm coming back to do that. For. Yeah, because I met you in person, right? So now I'm like, well, I have to take that. Yeah, and anything. if you got any other guys you want to come out and run yeah, for the sure. course, we'll, we'll see. We'll what, do it. Yeah, we'll see we'll you can do, do. do. So okay. thanks again for coming. Yeah, it was great to be here. Howie. Uh, and make sure to stay in tuned uh, next week to more Eight Weeks Out TV. We'll have more special guests, more great interviews, and go ahead and enter your name and email in to, to get on the newsletter list so we can let you know when that's going to happen. You can find us at facebook.com slash eight weeks out, uh, twitter.com slash Joel Jameson, and you can find more information, more videos, and more coming your way next week on eight weeks out TV.